Hi, my name is Don Terrell, and today we're going to talk about how to read spark plugs. Learning how to read spark plugs may be the best money you ever spend. 10 to 50 horsepower is not unheard of. In fact, I've seen 60. I was working on a small block Ford on the dyno, and missing the timing by just one degree killed at 60 horse. How much would it usually cost you to pick up 50 horse? A lot more than this video. What's the difference between a good and a great engine builder? Is the one that can get the most out of the parts he's got. Give 10 racers the same engine, you're going to have 10 different results. The best tuners coming out on top. So let's get started. Since you paid for this video, I know you want to get the most out of it. So here's a few tips. Watch the video multiple times. There have been many studies that show you have to see something multiple times before you fully understand it. If I tell you something you already know, don't be offended. Since I don't know your skill level, I will be covering some of the basics. Just try to focus on what you don't know. Remember, even one good idea can pay huge dividends. Okay, let's look what this video is going to cover. First, we're going to look at tools and supplies that you're going to need from different uh, spark plug inspection lights to uh, hand tools that can be helpful and protective gear. Next, we're going to look at how to properly remove spark plugs, and believe me, there is a right and wrong way to do that. Then we're going to get into the reading, which I know that's what you all want to find out about. Well, first, we're going to do that by looking at the common mistakes people are making, and it usually involves trying to read a spark plug with automotive-type charts. Next, we're going to look at how to get good spark plug reads, the first thing that you have to do for that. And here's something I don't think a lot of people look at, is how to get a good baseline read for your spark plugs. And you can do that on the dyno or at the racetrack, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, there are three things to look at when you're inspecting a spark plug, and they're the, the porcelain, the center electrode, and the ground strap. One thing to note here is, and I'm going to go over this, is how the spark plug location can really skew the readings. And there's some really good examples of that. Next is installing from indexing to gapping to using the proper lube. And there is a right lube to use, by the way. All these things are going to show you how to jet, set your timing right, and choose the right plug heat range. And lastly, we're going to look at cylinder to cylinder variations and what you can do about that. Okay, let's look at some of the tools that I use. First off, you got to get the spark plug wire off. And uh, we don't want to get burnt. So, some really good high temp gloves for really reaching in there far. Some of these forearm protectors, those definitely come in handy. If you're in the automotive industry, I know you've seen these. These are spark plug uh, boot pullers. We're pulling off one spark plug at a time to see if you can find the dead cylinder. This one I just made out of a coat hanger for reaching in through the fender well to pull the spark plug uh, boot off. Next, we got to pull the spark plug out. All I got here is a short handled ratchet swivel with this nice spark plug socket swivel with this attached long extension perfect for getting in through the fender. Once we pull the spark plugs out we got to put them somewhere. It can be anything from uh, this simple sheet metal piece that you could probably make yourself. You can make one out of wood. This is a little bit nicer one here made out of plastic. It's got some foam inserts to hold the spark plugs better. Once we have them out, we got to inspect them. And here's four different spark plug inspection lights that I've used over the years. From uh, really good quality, these two here, to here's a cheaper pocket version. I kind of like this one, kind of take it when I'm not sure whether I'm going to read spark plugs tonight or not. This is kind of nice to have. Now, this one here is probably what most of you are used to seeing when it comes to uh, spark plug inspection lights. This is the old style. And I got this held together with 200 mile an hour tape here. But really, this is just uh, not that good. Really, the key is 
is great light power and uh, magnification helps but the power of the light that's included in these really makes the difference. Next we got to uh, put the spark plug back in, the new one, and the lube I like to use is this extreme pressure lube. What you don't want to use is anti-seize. Anti-seize will skew your readings and by putting specs on the porcelain and throw you off. For indexing spark plugs, here's a neat little indexer that you can set. Turn these here and set them to your pair of cylinder heads so you can index these things, your spark plugs, before you ever stick them into the cylinder heads. Very nice. Uh, yeah, Sharpie to mark your ground strap when you do your indexing. Here I've got a cutoff wheel and when you're first getting started in reading spark plugs it may help if you cut off the thread so you can really look down and see the porcelain. Once you get used to seeing it and know what you're looking at then you probably won't have to do this and you can just use the inspection lights. So these are the tools that I use. One last tool I forgot about was the, uh, was the microscope. If you really want to get serious about your spark plug reading, I'd recommend it. They're uh, three to four hundred dollars and really you can't beat it for inspecting the porcelain. Uh, it really allows you to get in there and see the texture and see if the porcelain's been boiling and really help you to pick the uh, heat range. So if you want to take it to the next level, you might want to consider it. Okay, for removing spark plugs, I think one thing a lot of people don't think about is all the dirt that's laying in next to the spark plug and the cylinder head. In between there, there can be, uh, you know, sand and uh, uh, pieces of uh, tire and things like that that you wouldn't want falling down into your cylinder. So one of the things I think people forget about or don't even think about at all is getting that out of there first before they pull the spark plugs out. And what I do is use carb cleaner or brake cleaner and spray in around the plug once the spark plug wires off. And then all I do is take a long reach blow gun like this and just blow all the grit out of there. It doesn't take very long. You probably don't have to do it every single time you do it. But once in a while, clean all that grit out of there. It's going to go a long way to save your engine. Okay, let's look at a couple common mistakes people make. First off is using common automotive type plug reading charts. I know you've all seen these at the auto parts store. and They are posted everywhere. Websites, you name it. I mean, shows things from oil fouled to, uh, you know, porcelain chipped away and, and ground straps melted and uh, I mean, you name it. These kind of things you might see on somebody's farm tractor, but you're not likely to see too many of these things uh, in auto racing, and these things are going to do nothing to help you tune your engine. So and the next mistake is, like I pointed this out earlier, is a poor inspection light, something that doesn't have enough magnification or light power to see deep into the spark plug to really get a good read on fuel and heat. Okay, let's look at how to get good spark plug reads. First off, you've got to start with clean spark plugs, brand new. You can't look at something that's made lap after lap or run after run and try to get a good read. I know you've seen people in the pits trying to do this. You've got to put brand new spark plugs in it. And uh, the next thing is you've got to get a clean cut. Now, some racers know what this means, but some don't. Uh, for circle track, it means uh, you know, hot laps, uh, as many as you can get, and then a clean cut, full power, do not let the thing idle. Turn off the ignition, push in the clutch, coast in. If you've got to have your crew push the car around, then so be it to get a good plug read. I mean, if you let the thing idle, there's no sense going ahead and looking at the spark plugs and trying to tune for that. You're going to make a disaster out of the engine. Uh, for the drag race guys, uh, what you can do is go down the long end. If you don't have anybody helping you out, I mean, sometimes what I do is 
even if you're just trying to get read off one spark plug, it's better than uh, reading no spark plug. So you just, I just throw the tools in the back of my car, go to the long end, uh, kick the motor off and coast to the end, get out, pull out my spark plug, you know, throw it in the car, put a brand new spark plug in it or a used one or whatever to get it back into the pits, and then I have a good read. Okay, now plug reading is not an exact science. So the absolute best way to know what your spark plugs should look like is to do it on the dyno, is to get clean cuts on fresh, brand new spark plugs. When you know the engine's tuned up perfect, you know, tune it for jetting and tune these things to power, you know, jet it till you get the best power, set the timing till you get the, the best power, set the heat range of the spark plug till you get the best power, and then put some new plugs in, get a fresh, get a nice clean cut, pull those spark plugs out, and then you keep these. This is what your spark plugs should always look like, and no matter what the weather does, you can tune back. If you forget what they should look like, you just come back to your, bring these plugs, look with your inspection light, and you'll know what your spark plugs should look like. Now, not everybody can go to the dyno, and so the next best thing to do is to do it at the racetrack when you know you've got a good tune-up, you know, you say, that's the best this motor has ever run. For drag racers, it's a lot easier to tell. But when you know, then get a fresh set of plugs in there, make some passes, make some laps, and get those plugs out on a clean cut again and save those spark plugs. And you want to kind of store them so they don't get dirty. Put them in something so that they won't get contaminated. And you can always look back to these spark plugs and know what your spark plugs should look like. Okay, let's look at how to read spark plugs. And the first thing we want to look at is the porcelain. That's the white part here. Uh, I've got the threads removed so you can see it. This here is the porcelain also. And what most people do when they're reading spark plugs, when they don't know what they're doing, is they look for color up here, maybe at the top or covering the whole porcelain all the way down to the bottom. What you want to do for the good tune-up is you just want like a pencil thin line of color right down here. Just thin. And as that, as you give it more fuel, that line's going to move up and it's going to get wider. Now when you're looking at the porcelain and you're looking at this color down here, you are tuning for fuel. Okay, now let's look at the uh, ground strap. And uh, here's a couple different examples, um, long and a short one. But this is the ground strap right here. A lot of people call that, uh, that the electro, but that's the ground strap. And what we're looking at here, we are tuning for uh, timing. We're going to look uh, timing here and as you put more timing into it and you get more heat you're going to have this thing color move from here and head all the way down here. Now when you look at it, it sometimes it's hard to tell which one's colored whatever. Sometimes you'll see what you think is the color is here opposite of this but what it is is more heat's getting into it. It's traveling farther and farther down here and uh, for like uh, drag racing when you're on a short run, you can, you can uh, set your timing where that thing's almost down into the, where the ground strap is welded to the threads. Uh, as you're playing it safer in stock cars where they have to run a lot, you'll want to move that back up. But what you're doing there is you're tuning your timing by looking at the ground strap. And this one here actually, this is a really good example of what that should look like. Okay, the last thing we have to set now that we've set the fuel and we've set the timing is to set the heat range of the plug. And here's some examples of different heat ranges. This is from cold to hot. And when it means, it doesn't make your engine run like uh, coolant temp hot or cold. There's some people that actually believe that. But this uh, will run the plug cooler by allowing more of the temp to be moved out of this area and uh, taken away by uh, the cylinder head and into the coolant system. And these get uh, hotter. Now, this would be something typical that's going to be really hot. 
uh, if your engine's going to run really hot, say something that runs uh, like a NASCAR, something that's going to run 500 miles, 500 laps, you know, that thing's going to have just a ton of heat in it. When you've got drag racing, uh, something you're only running a quarter mile, you can use something like that, or a street motor where you're trying to keep it, uh, where you're trying to keep it clean. You'll run something like that. So that's the difference. So now, how we decide how to set that is uh, not an exact science, but you, what you want to look for when you know that you have the thing too hot, which is too much this way, and you need to cool it down, is when you start seeing that the porcelain is actually boiling. And what you'll see is black specks, and that is actually uh, the porcelain boiling and almost like turning to glass, and it'll be black specks. People think that's uh, carbon or uh, flexible aluminum. Now, the aluminum can, in, in a disastrous situation, end up on a spark plug, but usually what you're seeing in those little black specks up there is the porcelain boiling, and you're going to have to move this direction and cool the spark plug down. Now the way to really set it right, and to know that you got the right one, is you know just head this way until you get it to boil and then back it off. Okay, I get the question sometimes, in what order should I tune those things? And uh, the way I do it is, is if I know that I am safe on my timing, then I'll move to fuel first. Now, if I don't have a clue about my timing, then I want to go to that first. I definitely don't want to be out there with way too much timing. That can be a disaster, so fix that first. But if I know I'm safe, um, have a couple out of it from what I know is safe, then move to fuel. Set the fuel first. Look for this line. Set that. Next, move on to the timing. And remember, as we get more timing and it, more heat, the coloration is going to head down the ground strap towards the weld as it welds into the threads. And then last, we set the heat range. Uh, and remember, uh, move it hotter until you see it boil and then back it off. Now, when you go through these and do it in, this, in the step that I showed you, it, some of these things can, can uh, you know, like fuel can change this, uh, timing can change this, so you maybe want to go around them multiple times until you get it exactly right. One last thing that you can look at uh, that some people look at, actually a couple things, and with the, the new metals in some of the spark plugs, this really doesn't work anymore, but this is what some people did, is they would look at discoloration on the center electrode and how far the discoloration headed down or even at an angle was more heat. And the other thing they would look at is how far, how far the heat would travel down the inside of the threads on the inside. They'd look in there and see how far the coloration was down inside these threads and they'd look at the discoloration on the center electrode. Um, you can pay attention to that if you want, but if you focus on the three other ways of setting the fuel, the timing, and setting the heat range, I think you're going to find that these other things are going to throw you off. I don't know that I've ever heard anybody talk about this, but I believe there is a way where your spark plug readings can be skewed by the spark plug's location in the chamber. Now this is a Pontiac head and I can't imagine how you could make this any worse. This is the intake valve, there's the spark plug. As fuel comes in through here, where's it going? Right at the spark plug. You got wet fuel and I don't care what you do, you're going to have some wet fuel traveling in here that's not atomized and it's going to run right across the face of the spark plug and cool it off. This is a disaster. That's why Chevy went to angle plug heads and what they were trying to do is move it away from that and get it over here towards the exhaust valve. So keep that in mind how the plug location can skew your readings. This is not the only uh, 
example of that, but this is the most graphic. Okay, now it's time to install brand new spark plugs. And uh, all you have to do is you want to inspect them and make sure that you don't have any cracks in the porcelain, uh, even up here. And sometimes it's really hard to see, but that uh, will miss for sure if it's cracked. Uh, and the other thing to look for is a uh, bent ground strap, like it's been dropped or something like that. Don't, if that happens, don't try to fix it. Just throw it away. Get a new one. Okay, now I know a lot of people talk about indexing, and uh, I've read things all over the place saying how they've picked up 10 horsepower by indexing their spark plugs in. And uh, my feeling is that if you found horsepower by indexing, uh, your testing probably wasn't very good. Now, I say the only time you have to index is if you have a piston to spark plug clearance problem. And in that case, you want it like that get the ground strap out of the way of the piston to make clearance. But you can test it yourself and, and go ahead and prove me wrong, and maybe you will, but I've never seen it or uh, I've never tested myself where that made any difference at all. As I've stated uh, multiple places, talked about this often, and I'm not a real fan of bending the ground strap. I've personally seen these fall off and uh, I don't know how much difference it makes by bending them but I'd rather see getting these things right out of the box and not messing with the gap. Uh, I just feel a lot better about that. I mean you'd be surprised what that little piece of metal can do to your engine. And the last thing for installing is just put a little bit of lube, like I said the extreme pressure lube not anti-seize, just a little bit on these things, especially if you're using aluminum cylinder heads, not nearly as important if you're using cast iron. Okay, so what do you do if you have cylinder to cylinder variations? All your spark plugs don't look the same and, and unless you are got a really great combination, you're going to have some look a little bit different. Uh, first thing you can do is try cross jetting. That means uh, different uh, jetting in a corner, uh, on an end, side to side, trying to favor that cylinder that's having trouble. Uh, the other thing you can do is uh, uh, different ignition timing per cylinder and really you need a bendable reluctor in your dis distributor where you can move individual cylinders to change the timing. And that's something where if you can look at exhaust temps on the dyno that can really help you to give that a tune-up. Uh, Another thing is to look at the different plug heat ranges for different cylinders to help out. And uh, even another thing you can do is projected or regular tip spark plugs. And projected just means how far does this center electrode extend from the end of the threads, how far into the chamber. You can put different ones in different cylinders to help them out. And that's just some of the things you can do when you got cylinder to cylinder variations. Okay, let's recap the main points. First off, if you can, you'd like to get a baseline spark plug. Either get it on the dyno, or when you know your car is really running good at the racetrack, you'll want to get and keep those spark plugs. Uh, next is, if you know that your timing is pretty close, it's safe, then the first thing you want to tune for is jetting. And here we're looking at the bottom of the porcelain all the way down, and we're looking for this just pencil thin line. Now one thing that I didn't say before is sometimes you'll get uh, coloring down here that'll throw you off. And what it'll be is right down here in this corner where uh, excess fuel will be laying down here next to the gasket inside the spark plug. You need to ignore that and just look at this line right here. Next we want to set the timing and again we're looking at the ground strap and as we add more timing it heads this direction and it heads towards the weld. And it's usually a good setup is going to be right in, right in the corner of that bend, uh, headed down towards the weld. And lastly, we set the heat range of the spark plug. And what you want to do is, if you're really trying to tune the thing up, is 
uh, put in ever increasingly hot spark plugs until you can get the porcelain to boil and then back it off a step or two from there. Now to see this, a microscope works really good uh, until you uh, get used to looking at it under an inspection light. The microscope's going to help a ton with looking at the porcelain. So good luck out there at the racetrack.